The Bible tells us that every believer in Christ will experience opposition from the demonic realm. Yes, but God has given us weapons that we can use to pull down strongholds and open the heavens over our lives. We're going to hear a portion of a message that you, Joan, recently yeah. <laughs> preached on the power of worship. Do you need a breakthrough? Well, stay tuned for Lifeline Today. Welcome to Lifeline Today. We're <laughs> glad you're part of the program. Yes. And Joan, it's going to be a special program because uh, guess who's preaching? Well, I am. Yeah. And it's a, it's a subject that's really, really dear to my heart. You yes, know, it is. I love praise and worship, and I just love that it, all through the Bible, it's peppered through the Bible, that God uses praise and worship as a weapon mm. to paralyze the enemy. And so, Dick, uh, we're going to go into this message, but I just wanted to do this. I just wanted to uh, read a quote from Dr. Terry Law. Terry Law was a friend of ours, and he says this in 1985, he said this, if the church does not discover the power of praise and worship and learn how to combine that with the supernatural, we will have no answer for what is coming in the days that lie ahead. I felt like that was very prophetic, and I believe we're living in those days that yeah. lie ahead. Well, you know, Joan, the intensity of the demonic realm is very obvious. Yeah. When you see the cultural shift that's happened in the last 10 years, uh, and, and 12 years or so, it is shocking. Yeah. And that shows you the intensity of the demonic realm. Well, that means that something greater has to happen. See, the Bible says when the enemy comes in, the f in as a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. And that is one of the standards, is yeah. the power of his presence in praise and worship. Yeah. So we're going to go into the worship hall where mm -hmm. you ministered this message. We're going to come back, pray for you, and share some thoughts with you as well. Yeah. Let's look at... Uh, another personal situation in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 16 and verse 25 and 26. We're going to look at Paul and Silas. Verse 25, but at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to our God. And the prisoners heard them, so they weren't praying quietly. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. Paul and Silas were in a Philippian prison. Here's why. They had preached the gospel. People were saved. I think on that trip, Lydia was saved, great woman of God. They cast out the devil out of a slave girl that was possessed by a spirit of divination. And that was their big mistake. Because this woman brought her masters much money through her gift of divination and witchcraft and so it was okay until they, they did until they did that but then at that point they were seized and beaten and thrown into pr prison and they weren't thrown into the outer prison they were thrown into the inner prison they were put in a dungeon their feet were in stocks it was a terrible place feet were in shackles it was dark it was damp it was stinky their bodies were in excruciating pain and they were sure that they were going to die but here they said instead of feeling sorry for themselves they decided to launch their weapons through praise and worship loudly because everybody in the prison heard them and when they did that, they, they sang praises to the Lord in the midst of their trouble and trial. Suddenly, it says there was a great earthquake. The fountains of the prison were shaken. Immediately, all the doors were open. And here's the thing. Everyone's chains were loose. Do you think angels were involved in this? Yeah. Hallelujah. We're coming into the place I know we are, where angels are going to get involved in our warfare, and we're going to know it. That could only be an angel. That could only be an angel. That could only be an angel. And so let me just say something right here about the sacrifice of praise. Hebrews 13, verses 15 Therefore, by him let us continually offer up 
the sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. There's something about the costliness of the sacrifice of praise that touches the heart of God in a way that you can not touch his heart any other way. When we give him praise in our deepest times of difficulty, when things are the darkest, it means the most to him. And I really believe that that's what happened to Paul and Silas as they sat in that stinky, dirty prison and they decided to praise God. In spite of everything, they decided to praise God. Do you know that there is a spiritual hot button, that's what I call it, in the action of sacrifice of praise? It moves us into miracles. It moves us into the divine action of Almighty God and angels get involved. Now I want us to go back to our friend Dr. Terry Law because when he came, he shared his testimony with us. He actually did it twice uh, on television. And um, I had to think back about what it was, but here's his testimony. Uh, you know, they had the singing groups and they were all over in the Soviet bloc, plus they were in Europe and they were in Africa. So they had many, many teams, but he was the head of all these teams. And he had to go to London one night to meet, ha have a board meeting with his European uh, group there. And so in, while he was in London on that ministry trip in September 1982, he was awakened in the night to the news that his wife had been killed in a car accident. Terry says he was plunged into deep grief. His heart was aching. Bitterness and self-pity were beginning to take hold of him. The devil came and sat on his shoulder and he whispered into his ear every day, has God, God been very cruel to you? How could you, how could loving God allow something like this to happen? Legitimate questions that he would have even in his own heart. He felt a tremendous guilt for not being there when his wife passed away and being there with his children at the time. They were little children. He had three little children at the time. He said following the funeral, he couldn't pray. He told Lord, the Lord on the way home from London, I'll never be in the ministry again. I'm done. You know, how many times have we said that? I know there's a couple of times I've said that in my life. But then you come around <laughs> and God pushes you forward, right? Um, following the funeral, he couldn't pray. He became very bitter and angry and he blamed God. After all he had done and endured for the gospel, how could he have been rewarded like this? He was confused and he hurt. But then he says one day Oral Roberts asked him to come and see him at his office because Oral Roberts had just lost a son three months ago. I don't know, if probably several of you would remember this. His son's name was Ronnie, and Ronnie committed suicide. And so when he came to sit with Oral, they sat and they talked about their pain. And about after about two hours, Oral Roberts stood up, and he pointed his finger at Terry, and he said, I'm going to tell you something that is going to save your life. You have got to begin to praise the Lord. Terry said he looked up at Oral and said, I can't. I just can't. And he said, Oral pointed at him again and he said, you have to. You have to praise the Lord. And so Terry went home that night. The next morning he got up got on his knees and he began to praise the Lord. He said, I said the word hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil said to him, Terry Law, you're a hypocrite. How can you praise God after he killed your wife? You're a liar. Didn't God give you a word and say, and this was a word from God, 
I'm going to send you to minister amongst the closed countries of the world. You will do things that most people will believe impossible. If you trust me and are obedient, I will protect you. The devil said, didn't God say that to you? And how's that working for you now? And Terry said he believed the enemy, but he was determined to press on. Now, these are Terry's own words, okay? He said, the words of Psalm 34, verse 1, came to me. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Spiritually, he said, I was looking into a dark abyss of despair and self-pity. I felt that I had every good reason to feel sorry for myself. Hadn't I risked my life for God time and again, and I know we had, on the mission fields all over the world? It just wasn't fair. And then the words came again, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. We used to sing that. How many remember singing that song years ago? Good to sing scripture. If you're writing songs, write it with scripture in them. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And the devil answered, you might as well give up. There's no hope. God has failed you. He says, then I sang it aloud. I sang it really loud. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Something happened down in my spirit. I had taken the last step I could take toward God. But the devil doesn't give up very easily. How many know that? We're in a battle. We're in a war. So we can't give up, right? So he said, when you praise God like that, you're lying. You don't mean those words. How can you? Then he said, I sang it louder. I will bless the Lord at all times. And he said, the battle was on. It was a battle. And he said, he waited for some kind of an emotional response, but nothing came. He was acting on sheer willpower alone. He said, I praised for 30 minutes. I praised for half an hour. I praised for an hour. Oh, then two hours. And still nothing happened. But Terry said, I wasn't going to give up. And here's his words again. Specifically, he said, sometime between two and two and a half hours, I felt a pressure building up on the inside of me. It was like a dam that would explode. And then it did. It exploded. With a mighty rush, he said, I began to cry with hot, stinging tears. I, it was like a cramp in my stomach had been released. I raised my hands. How many hours I was on my knees, I don't remember. Have you ever had a visitation from God like that? When you're there for hours and hours and God is just ministering to your heart. He said he was pouring the oil of Gilead all over me. He just felt like the oil was being poured all over him. I've been there several times. You don't know how long you're on your knees. You don't know how long you're on the floor. He says, how many hours I was on my knees? I don't know. I don't remember. But I felt the Holy Spirit take the oil of he healing and pour it over my fractured, torn emotions. Obedience in praise and worship had brought healing to my inner man. And Terry was healed that day. Do you know that I have known people that have lost a loved one and they've been going through a time of grieving. And you know what? Grieving is healthy. There is a process and it's healthy. But you leave that door open too long. And when you do that, there's an open door for the enemy to come in with a spirit of grief. And then you're going to need an experience like this to get set free. He was delivered from a spirit of grief. Amen. After that... Uh, experience. He said to us then, then God changed the course of my ministry. 
God said to him, I am going to have you bring salvation and healing and deliverance to people everywhere through the message of the power of praise and worship. The word, the name, and the blood being the content of the worship. He said what he had to do was get in contact with all of his worship leaders and all of his teams all around the world and tell them that they had to pull all the worship songs, uh, all the praise songs and all the worship songs that weren't focused on the word, the name, and the blood. And he said they were left with about one-tenth of the songs that they used to sing. But they went forward from there, worshiping God, singing only songs that had the weapons of the name, the word, and the blood in them. And so, uh, and also after that, Terry went on, as you know, it was probably the biggest ministry of his life. He went on to form World Compassion, where he would bring the gospel, but then feed the hungry people all over the world. So in the jail in Philippi, Paul practiced what he preached, didn't he? Have you ever practiced what you preach? Sometimes I practice things and I'm thinking, I don't preach that. I preach exactly the opposite. I need to practice what I preach, amen. Paul practiced what he preached. He literally pulled down strongholds by the power of sacrificial praise. He and Silas launched their weapons and the foundations of the prison were shaken. Acts 16, 25, it says at midnight, everyone say, Midnight. Why does God always leave it till midnight? I don't know. Just maybe he's building character in us. I don't know. Maybe those are one of the questions we'll have when we meet Jesus. Although I don't think we'll have too many questions when we meet Jesus. I'm planning on being on my face. Yes. <laughs> and nothing else will matter. Right. Amen. But in the midst of the pain and the hurt... The darkness, the disappointment, they praised God. They launched their rockets armed with the name, the word, and the blood. The prison was shaken and they were freed. They were all freed. That is what praise and worship can do for us today. Fresh wind, fresh fire. You're invited to Dominion Conference 2023, June 30th to July 2nd in Lethbridge, Alberta, as we join to experience a fresh wind and a fresh fire over our nation. Never before has Canada needed a spiritual awakening like now. Join hosts Dick and Joan DeWert, along with special guests, prophetic revivalist Samuel Robinson, encourager and church planter Paul Jones, and evangelist Jacob Walda. Participate in high-level praise and worship with Ryan and Elissa Caldwell and special guest Melody Lesmeister. And kids will love the cowboy-themed ministry with Ruby Aaron. Register today online, on the app, or in person for this free conference, June 30th to July 2nd. Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire, Dominion Conference 2023. Did you know that God has given us a powerful, supernatural weapon of praise? In crazy times like these, we need to keep our focus right. Praising and thanking God is one of the best ways to do it. Hebrews 13.5 says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess His name. We know our war is ultimately not with flesh and blood. It's with the enemy of our souls. He knows the power that's within our praise to God. There are three ways praise brings breakthrough. Praise brings strength. Praise silences the enemy. And praise activates deliverance. You can praise above the attacks. When you do, you are enforcing the victory of the cross that disarmed the enemy. You cut off his influence in your life and you send confusion into his camp. When your circumstances are overwhelming, praise. God fights for us when we praise. No matter what you're going through, make a point to praise. Even when all is going well, get into the habit of praising so you'll be well equipped to face whatever comes your way. 
If you need prayer today, call our prayer center at 403-942-0123 or email us at prayercenter at dickandjoan.com. That's a great message, Joan. And there was more to it, obviously. Uh, we yeah. just took a clip. But, you know, one of the things that uh, stands out is that one of the most powerful things you can do is the sacrifice of praise. Yes, that's right. Now, the sacrifice of praise is exactly that. You don't feel like it. Your circumstances <laughs> are uh, horrific. Maybe uh, things have all fallen down around you and things are falling apart. Maybe you're facing a financial crisis. Yeah. And in that scenario, you begin to lift your hands and give uh, the sacrifice of praise. The sacrifice means it's not easy to do. Yeah. It's not like you just feel pumped. I know a lot of people, Joan, we've pastored for Years. a lot of decades. <laughs> I'm not going to say how many. It's a long time. And you know, there's people that, you know, they come Yahoo and praise the Lord when all things are going good, but moments yeah. not going, things aren't mm -hmm. going as well. All of a sudden you don't even see them. They stay home. They don't go to church or they, they stay awake. Mm -hmm. Wrong thing to do. Yeah. When you're going through your problems, when you're alone or when you're a shut in or when you're going through something that's of a crisis, that's the time to lift your hands and praise the Lord because then you let God know he's sovereign. Yes, that's over right. Over every situation in your you life. You know what? That's what, that's exactly what Paul and Silas did when they were in the totally. prison. And I like to say they were in the dungeon because that was a horrid prison. It was a prison. hole. It was a hole and they yeah. were in shackles and it was dark and it was damp and they were beaten and so they were really hurting. And what did they decide to do? They said, you know what? We're going to praise our God. And something supernatural happened, I think, even that God carried their praise to the other cells so that the, everyone in the prison and heard it. It was supernatural right from the very start. They decided in their hearts to do something supernatural and God was right there. And you know, a uh, big earthquake, how did that happen? It had to be you know, God involved. Well, the shackles and, fell off, so yes, it was more and, than just an earthquake. And it wasn't just their shackles that fell off. Everyone's Everybody's. chains fell yeah. off, it says. So, you know, I just, I, I love what we're learning about praise and worship as a weapon. I I think that we don't know near what we do need to know. I sometimes wonder about um, Satan, who was Lucifer in heaven. Which who means light bearer, actually. Light bearer, and it says that his body actually ha contained Musical every instruments. instrument that was needed yeah. you know, to worship. And he was the master musician in heaven. Yeah. He was one of the covering cherubs that covered the glory of God. And how does he feel? today when he has lost that yeah and we worship god yeah see it was his it was his position to be the head worshiper of god in heaven and he lost that but where is it now that that privilege is on god's people yeah when he hears us praise and worship like that literally he is paralyzed and you see this in different scriptures like second chronicles 2020 when jehoshaphat puts the the worship team ahead of the army and when they come upon the armies that they were battling against they were all dead because God had turned them against one another sent ambushments but so there's something that happens confusion parallels uh, the enemy is paralyzed he's confused and then God sends his angels to do the work you know the thing is that he was Lucifer was created for that purpose he yeah. had to do that yeah. it says though that God had given him uh, freedom of choice mm -hmm. because it says one day his heart was lifted up within within himself mm -hmm. he began to think how beautiful I am and and it was the the <laughs> cause of his downfall yeah. and his downfall was horrific created yeah. uh, havoc in heaven you know yeah. and he was cast down to the earth he was cast out of heaven yeah. uh, you know and it's so the battle we're in today mm -hmm. is all about his former position but look what God has done yeah. Instead of having a created being, he has created a family mm -hmm. who is given free will mm -hmm. and we get to choose whether we worship and praise and thank God or not. And many times we choose the sacrifice of praise, which really, really touches the heart of God. Yeah. You know? Now, that's the most difficult thing, because if you're going through your crisis, your trial, your your difficulties right now, it's hard to lift those hands. Yeah. But the Bible does say lift up the hands that hang down yes and the right. feeble knees it says yes. and lift them up and in that moment your praise now it may not be as glorious you might not be dancing 
and across the floor, but <laughs> it may not be as glorious, but it is probably more meaningful yeah. than anything else you can do. And it's probably the greatest statement of faith because what you're saying is no matter what I see going on in my life, you're in charge, oh God. Yes, you amen. are in charge. You know, and Dick, this works, this whole concept works in a personal way, but it also, I believe, works in nations. And I believe that we're going to see the day where nations are literally changed in a day. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Can a nation be born in a day? I believe they can. When God's people come together and worship him. Yeah. I believe that the spiritual atmosphere over entire nations can be changed in a day. We've seen it to a certain extent, Dick, in Canada. I believe we're going to see a lot more. So, Joan, one of the things we've seen through, uh, well, let's talk about modern history, which I mean the last 120 years or so, great revivals. Out of every great revival comes a wave of new songs. The yeah. Welsh revival, the Pentecostal Azusa Street, yeah. but they're charismatic, the voice of healing days, yeah. waves of praise and worship. Yeah. But probably one of the most profound started in 1967, the charismatic uh, revival. <laughs> and out of that, the whole praise and worship movement began. And uh, remember, we did an interview with Bill and uh, what was her name, Mirabel, or was it? They, uh, they were praise and worship leaders down at Christ for the yes, Nations. Yes, they were. And they were the first ones to put praise and worship on a cassette tape. Yes, they were. <laughs> and uh, this was Christ for the Nations in Dallas, Texas. And they started copying them and printing them. That started the whole movement of CDs and of praise and worship, yes. which we now have abundantly. And yeah. so uh, something it tells you about the so end you, of the age. So you what, can fill your home with that praise and worship amazing. and sing along with it. Amazing. Uh, it's just really powerful. And like I say, Dick, we know a certain amount about the, the power that's released during praise and worship, but we don't know nearly what we need to know. We're learning. But what God is saying to us in this day of spiritual warfare, we need to come up higher yeah. and do our warfare in the spirit. One so of the that's things our heart. Too, Joan, um, lately there's been a lot more emphasis on worship, mm -hmm. but I think that's going to shift again mm -hmm. because it is the power of praise. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when the Jehoshaphat, you mentioned in Second Chronicles 20, it, when he did the uh, thing about the worshipers, it was praise that yeah. preceded the army. Yeah. I want to just say that we need to see another wave of praise. It's not yeah. the only one or the other, I know that, but it's a wave of praise that breaks the power of darkness. Amen. Lord, we pray for our yes, amen. precious ones today. Those who are at home, they need a miracle, they need a breakthrough, they need to sense your presence. Thank I you, pray, Lord. Lord, they will do what Terry Law did. Yes. That in the midst of their despair, he lifted Amen. his hands and began to offer the sacrifice of praise. Thank you, Father. You say, Lord, you inhabit the praises of your people. Yes, We Father. ask you to inhabit them today Invade in Jesus' homes, name. We, pray, we love Father. hearing from you. Let us know in the prayer center if there's a need. We love to have our teams pray for you. And remember this, working together, we're going to see Canada will be Amen. saved. Amen. God bless you. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for partnering with us. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments about the program. To watch past episodes, learn about the ministry, or contact us, visit our website at dickandjoan.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan, and on our YouTube channel, Dick and Joan TV.